Do you want to hit a forehand that makes your friends react like this? Stick around and I'm going to show you how. So I'm sure we all want that huge forehand drive power of our tennis player buddies. But how are you going to get it if you didn't play tennis for 15 or 20 years? Well, you're in luck. I'm going to give you all of the secrets that I learned teaching tennis for almost 15 years to develop some easy power in your forehand drive. I want to start by breaking down a few common myths of how I hear the forehand drive commonly taught. So the first would be that we have to turn sideways before hitting the ball. So we got to get our body turned sideways to the court. Now, if this is true, somebody has to let some of the top singles players in the world, like Tyson McGuffin and Federico Stocksrude, know because they're doing it wrong. So the second one, and the, these kind of go hand in hand, is that once we get that sideways turn, we're gonna wanna extend as long as we can down our target line. So we're really gonna wanna extend towards where we wanna hit the ball. Now, in theory, this would make sense. If I want the ball to go a certain direction, swing and extend that direction. Unfortunately, that's just not how it works. Let's dive into what we actually need to focus on to start to get some easy power in our forehand. There's really only one thing that matters when we're trying to hit the ball harder or with more spin on those forehand drives, and that is paddle speed. There's a direct correlation to, if I get this paddle swinging faster, I'm gonna hit the ball harder. So that's what we're gonna focus on is getting more speed in our paddle. And there's two ways we're gonna do it. They're called lag and rotation. And I know that may not make sense, but don't worry, I'm gonna explain exactly what I mean. So let's dive into rotation first. So if we look at opposite ends of the spectrum as far as like how we wanna think about swinging, we've got the first way I described, which is turn sideways swing down your target line. That would be what I would call a very linear swing. We're trying to kind of keep everything in the same line, guided towards our target. On the other end of the spectrum, we're gonna focus on trying to get our paddle to swing in an arc around the body. And if you think about it, there's lots of sports that work on this principle. Golf, baseball, tennis. Our body more naturally works by working in a circle around rather than trying to go kind of in a linear or direct line. So part two of that equation that I mentioned was something called lag. So what is lag? Again, this exists in tennis, golf, baseball. It's basically when I start to rotate in whatever I'm holding, so for example, my pickleball paddle, if I start to rotate, the head of this paddle is gonna temporarily kind of get left behind because there's nothing supporting it. So it's gonna to wanna to get left behind and then it's gonna to try to catch up and it's gonna end up swinging faster. So now that we have a good grasp on what lag and rotation actually are, I'm gonna take you step by step and show you how to actually get a feel for it yourself. So here's how it's gonna go. We're gonna start in our ready position and we're gonna start by just making a 90 degree turn with your body. We're not gonna move our paddle at all. So we're not doing anything like that. We're just gonna take our whole body and we usually refer to this as a unit turn. I'm turning the whole thing without moving my feet, okay? So you'll notice when I do this, that my paddle is kind of pointed that way. It's pointed out to the side. I haven't put it behind my hand. So it's just here. Step three is we're gonna start to, we're gonna start to pull the elbow forward. When the elbow starts to come forward, the paddle is gonna tip back, okay? So we're gonna start going elbow forward, Paddle tips back, and at the same time, we're gonna start rotating our body and turning that direction. Okay, so all together, here, rotate and turn. After you feel comfortable with that, next you can go into some drop feeds, where we're just gonna drop the ball, swing and hit it. That way the ball's not moving, it's just in that kind of same spot. And then after that, you can go to some live ball hits and try to put it all together. Hey guys, I wanna give a quick shout out to Selkirk for not only supporting me as a player, but supporting my YouTube videos as well. Lately, I've been using this Power Air, which is an awesome paddle. Super poppy, great spin, really maneuverable and fast. If you wanna see this or anything else that they have, check out the website. 
and make sure to use my code to get a free gift card with your purchase. We're gonna do a little video breakdown of maybe one of the hardest hit forehands I've ever seen in pickleball. And it just happened a couple weeks ago from my guy over here that I circled, Zane Navratil. We're gonna roll the video first and take a look and then we'll go back and dissect what's going on. So you can see our reaction there. We play a lot of pro rec pickleball. We play a lot of tournaments. Based on our reaction, you can see everybody is, this is one of the hardest hit balls we've ever seen. Pretty serious stuff. So let's go back, rewind it here, and take a closer look, see if we can dissect what's actually going on here. See if Zane is doing some of this stuff that we talked about in the video. So we're gonna pause here. You can see this initial position is kind of what I described. He's got his unit turn, his stance is kind of somewhat open, and he's got that paddle tipped out to the side and nice and relaxed. Okay, so he's in a great starting position. Now, as we keep rolling forward, you're gonna see this kind of magic move. He's gonna pull on the elbow and handle, and now he creates this super lagged position. You can see the paddle is tipped back behind the hand in that what we call lag position, and it's ready to create a ton of speed. You have to stay relaxed if you wanna hit this position. You can't force the paddle into this position. As we keep going, he's just gonna let all that unwind. And you can see how quickly the paddle goes from contact and across his body. Again, like we talked about, notice it's not going down the target line. It's going in an arc around his body. And then you can see momentum wise, he's also not really stepping into the court He's not moving his body weight forward. He's in a pretty balanced position and he's swinging in, a, in an arc just around his body. So pretty good stuff here from Zane that almost perfectly describes everything we had talked about.